on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Wednesday. Let me tell you, stay inside, relax, and join the show today, and then stay tuned to the News Channel 5 Network all day and just take it easy if you don't have to go anywhere. And the only reason I say that is... Yesterday was hot, today's gonna to be even hotter. And you know what, it rained yesterday, so now we're gonna have humidity on top of it. And they say ragweed pollen, which I'm feeling really heavy duty right here, is super high today. So it's one of those days where stay in or you know go to a double feature movie or something like that okay take it easy a lot on TV today before we get to our topic this morning want to observe the fact that today is the 18th observance of the uh, September 11th attack in this country and I just wanted to bring it up at this moment to, to talk about it from the sense of do you remember where you were when you know the Twin Towers came down and what happened at the Pentagon and the plane crashing there in Philadelphia and all of this I mean I will never forget it and it stunned me today when you know and I know we've we've observed it every year when I realized it's 18 years 18 years ago I was sitting right here and to my left was Mark Binda our programming director and we were doing our you know our annual fall preview piece for the new shows on CBS and while we were doing this all of a sudden they start talking to my me in my ear and say you know there appears to be something significant going on in New York City and and so they ended up taking live on the plus this feed coming to us from New York City where you see one of the towers, the Twin Towers, on fire. And we're trying to, was there an accidental plane crash? What's going on? At this point, we didn't know any of that. But we really quickly realized this is a huge story. So, you know, we broke away from, from Morning Line. I left the set and went down and was watching in our newsroom. And it was just hard to comprehend. A initially, remember, folks, we were sitting there watching. And we thought, well, maybe just a plane accidentally did it. And then the second tower and you're like oh my gosh this is a terrorist attack and then the way it developed throughout the day as of course all that that, that airplane fuel burned and eventually weakened the structure and then God forbid those towers came down and the, the dust plume and all what I still remember among other things and those images of the towers and fire um, the people that were stranded above where the fire was and realizing the heat and they couldn't get away they were jumping from the windows you know dozens of stories up to their death they they, they couldn't otherwise they would have stayed in burn just watching how horrible it is anyway i bring it up from the senses that we will never ever forget it's been 18 years and wondering if you remember where where you were and just remembering the fact too that that moment changed so much in this country all right changed so much at the time think about it before that the unthinkable was that there would be a terrorist attack on American soil we thought, oh you know that happens elsewhere it doesn't happen here and then something like this happens and this was not domestic terrorism these were terrorists from outside the country and so the way that shook out anyway the, the way I look at it um, it's something that we want to remember never forget and and keep in mind my son now who is you know 17 years old and going to the University of Tennessee he you know uh, actually I take it back he's 19 he was one year old when this happened I mean for a lot of kids in school now this happened before they were even born and yet for me it feels like it happened yesterday but uh, just wanted to take a moment today to remember that and uh, and part of the reason it, it hits me hard is I'm sitting here this is where I was the morning it did happen we all remember where we were all right, so we have that out of the way. Let me uh, tell you about what we're going to discuss this morning. It's going to be the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. Um, and it's something that was established back in 1963 in this country, in this state, rather, to observe the laws of discrimination, to be aware of whether or not people are being treated correctly. We're going to talk about that and just get the word out on the importance of it and maybe some aspects of it you weren't aware of. So with us this morning, and we're going to be playing some musical chairs at some point. Now, Beverly Watts is going to join us in a moment. She's the executive director. You work with Beverly. You are? I'm Veronica McGraw and I am the Veronica. communications director. Okay, Veronica yes. wasn't sure she was going to come on first thing this morning, <laughs> but traffic can be a headache. Yes. But uh, Veronica, just if you would, you know, we were talking when I first came in with you before we started the show. I think people have heard Tennessee Human Rights Commission. They've yes. heard it and it's been in the news for a variety mm -hmm. of things and you guys are here helping a lot of folks. Yes. But I, I'm not sure everyone understands what 
what I guess the mission is. Yes, well the mission of yeah. the uh, Tennessee Human Rights Commission is to safeguard individuals from discrimination through education and enforcement. Um, so education, what we do, we do go out to the community statewide just to bring awareness to the commission. Come on shows like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, bring awareness. We're at several events, conferences, um, several meetings just to bring awareness to let people know that we, we do exist sure. um, and that we do um, bring in discrimination. I'm sorry, we do um, bring in uh, complaints of discrimination. When you say enforcement, and I, and yes. I think I think Beverly's here, and we'll take yeah. a break in yeah. a moment, but um, when you say enforcement, I understand education, that's a yes. very important yes, yes, part yes, yes. of it. You don't have, the, do you have the power to bring enforcement down, or you, you can be made aware when a complaint's filed with you? Do you refer it to someone, or how do you handle it when a complaint is filed with your commission? Um, well, when a complaint is filed, what we do, we have intake staff. So the intake staff, they do talk to the individual who's filing that complaint, okay. and they take in as much information so they as they can. Yes, yeah, so they go, it goes through an investigative process, and that's um, how the complaints are handled with our staff. And then does that, can someone be helped uh, is there any teeth to it? Once you, if you find there is, who is, I can lead to a civil lawsuit, things like yeah, this. Yeah, so we do have legal counsel on staff. That's what I thought. Yes, so um, once it goes through that, through our legal counsel, mm -hmm. that's where it's determined whether it's um, considered um, reasonable or non reasonable. And that's the trick, getting into it and exactly. hearing both sides of it. Listen, we're going to take a break. Yes. She's here. What Great. did you say? You did a nice yes. job. Thank, thank you so you. much. We'll <laughs> take a break, Veronica. Thank you. When we come back, we'll open up the phone lines as well. 737 7587 is the number. Beverly Watts, the executive director, will be on in just a moment as we continue to talk about the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. Stay with us. Thank you. 